Ram, Sita and Lakshman were living in exile. Ram met Bharat near Mount Chitrakoot. Ram consoled Bharat and with great love and affection asked him to return to Ayodhya. Ram, Sita and Lakshman then left from there. They reached Danka forest. They passed by the cottages of many sages on their way. They paid their respects to many great sages like Sage Atri and Sage Agatsya. They then reached Panchwati. Sita was enchanted on seeing the area of Panchwati. The gently flowing Godavari river, fruit and flower bearing trees. There was greenery everywhere and many different birds and animals stayed there. Ram thought, why not stay here for a few days? Hence, they built a cottage there. The walls and the roof of the cottage were made from cow dung. All three of them happily began living there. Every day they would eat various fruits and drink the clear sweet waters of the Godavari. One day, a very beautiful young woman came to their cottage. Sita was inside the cottage praying. Ram was resting outside and Lakshman was near some trees busy with some work. Ram immediately stood up on seeing the woman. But before he could say or ask anything, the woman came forward and spoke. Oh Ram, your deeds are great. I am in love with you. Please accept my hand in marriage. Ram heard her and smiled. He had recognized the woman. The beautiful young woman was in reality a demoness. Her name was Shurpanakha. She was the sister of Ravan, the king of Lanka. Ram smiled to himself on seeing the disguise of a beautiful woman assumed by Shurpanakha. He did not show that he had recognized her. He said, Oh fair maiden, I am married to Sita. It is impossible for me to marry you. Hearing this, the demoness replied, but I am more beautiful and intelligent than Sita ever can be. Ram replied, That is true. Why don't you marry Lakshman then? Shurpanakha took this seriously. She approached Lakshman and said, Lakshman, you are very brave. You marry me. Lakshman said, my dear wife Urmila is in Ayodhya. I am in exile. She always remains sad as she is away from me. How can I marry you? Shurpanakha said, So what? If you want, take permission from your elder brother Ram. Saying this, she once again went towards Ram to ask for his approval. Ram had as it is recognized Shurpanakha. He warned Lakshman by gesturing to him. Lakshman understood the gesture at once. He picked up his bow, armed it with an arrow and fired it at the jeweled crown on Shurpanakha's head. She turned around and saw anger on Lakshman's face. She gave up her dawned look and assumed her terrible, demonic form. She strode towards Lakshman in anger. Lakshman did not flinch at all on seeing her terrible form. Firing one arrow after another, he stopped her in her tracks. And then, finally cut off her nose with an arrow. The demoness ran away from there, screaming and shouting in anger and pain. Shurpanakha ran straight to her brother Ravan. Ravan said, What happened to you, sister? Why is your face covered with blood? Who attacked you? 
Shurpanakha said, Evil Ram and Lakshman have done this to me. Lakshman has chopped off my nose. Ravan said, What? How dare he? Sister, do not worry. I shall not rest until I have destroyed Ram and Lakshman. On hearing this, Shurpanakha calmed down a little and left for her palace. Ravan was left in deep thought. He was wondering how to destroy Ram and Lakshman.